one thing that everybody in this audience shares is a passion for fishing. That's the reason why we're here. We're looking for something that's gonna help us become a better angler, catch more fish, be a better competitor, or just be able to go out on the water and enjoy ourselves with a better understanding of what it is we're trying to do. I want you to think about the way you fish, but I want you to understand that no two fishermen fish the same way. Everybody's different. I don't see the water the way somebody else may read the water. It doesn't mean there's no fish there. All anglers have strengths and weaknesses. And what I simply mean by strengths and weaknesses is that we have ways we prefer to fish and ways that we really don't like to fish. Different techniques. For example, I have tremendous strengths and my weaknesses are pretty strong too, but there's a lot of techniques that I choose not to fish. One of my bigness, biggest weaknesses is a Carolina rig. And it's one of the best fish catching tools there is out there. I just don't throw a Carolina rig a lot. If you were to ever see one on the bow of my boat, it's because of two reasons. One, <laughs> I, I don't have anything figured out and I'm gonna try it. Or two, I found a good group of fish and I understand how great of a tool it is and I'm gonna use it to catch more of the fish. Don't wanna be caught out on the water without the right thing, the fish just happen to be biting, right? So when you're a little frustrated in the morning, you're getting ready for a turn, or maybe the night before you're preparing, what do you do? Ah, I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna take this, ah, what the heck, fire it all in there. It's one of the great things about these uh, nice bass boats we have, you got all kinds of compartment storage. So you end up with quite, you know, 20 rods and reels, 30 rods and reels, and all this tackle. But when you go out and try to perform, the problem with that scenario is the fact that you're always thinking about what? What are you always thinking about? What is the magic bait? What are the fish biting? That's the information that we're always searching for. So what happens is a lot of good anglers end up little information highway, you know, they call a local tackle store, they read and man, you know, I can nearly really whack them on this little chartreuse crankbait. I gotta go get those little chartreuse crankbaits. Or maybe, you know, you bought a plug at a, to at a store because it was on sale it was a custom painted, you know, $18 bait and you bought one of them and you take it out on the water fishing and you fish for three hours, no activity, where's your mind? When you're on the water and you're not catching any fish, where's your mind? Most anglers, most good anglers, their mind is where? In their tackle box. They're thinking about what they need to tie on to catch fish. What are the fish biting? And it just so happens you remembered you had that $18 plug and you tie it on, make a cast, the bait hits the water, you engage the reel, and a 10-pounder eats it. What's the first thought that's going to go through your mind? First thought. 10-pounder, three cranks of the reel, and you think, my God, this is an awesome bait. Right. right? What's the second thought that's going to go through your mind? I only bought one. <laughs> so what are you going to do when you put your boat on the trailer and head back to the tackle store, and you're going to buy the other four of them that are on the peg? Then what are you going to do with them? You're going to have fun with your buddies. <laughs> I got something you don't have. There's nothing wrong with this as long as you understand the path that you're leading yourself down. And it's what I've always referred to as a secret lure syndrome. A lot of good fishermen would never become great anglers because that's what they're always focused on. The deal, what the fish are biting, because they don't have an understanding of why these fish bite lures. And that's what I'm gonna cover. Really, let me just say this. Every time I am to catch a fish or you catch a fish, I, you know, I was in the boat with you, I could real quickly write down probably at least a half a dozen other lures you could have caught that same fish on. Just because you caught it on that bait, don't fall in love with the bait. Don't get me wrong, I got confidence in a lot of stuff, but don't fall in love with that bait. That's what gets most good anglers from ever becoming great anglers. Fall is just as good as summer and winter because the fish are still in the lake. All we have to do as anglers is study the fish, understand their seasonal movements, build confidence in a lot of the techniques and the tools. Dude, you can catch the same population of fish year round. Techniques change. Uh, this right here is probably my favorite time of the year of the fish. I love October, November, December, January. The fish aren't worried about spawning. There's no thermal clean. You know, we've had the turnovers. And usually when you catch one, you catch two, you catch three, you catch four. There, there's little or no pressure on a lot of the lakes. All the guys are in the woods hunting. All the kids are in school. There's nobody water skiing, no jet skis to bug you. You pretty much have these lakes to yourself at this time of the year. So it's always been one of my favorite, favorite times to fish.